Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee, and Chell is here. It's your girl, right. Chella H, Big H. Hey, Mano's in the building. Yeah. yeah. And it's a Friday. Good morning. So you know what that means. What it do is mean? shot o'clock all day today. Oh, That's man. right. Now we do have Coach Sydney <laughs> Carter joining us today. She's the assistant coach for um, Texas. She's also a former WNBA player. And of course, you've been hearing what we're world premiering today, Metro Boomin' and Future featuring the weekend. We still don't trust you. Hmm. All right, Chella. I'm telling you. All right, but in the meantime, let's shine a light. 800-292-5150. Let's shine a light. Spread some love. When we come back, it's way up. We gon' light the block up. I'm going to shine. I'm going to shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee and Mano's in the building. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's Chella's last day. Oh. Girl, Chella H, big H. Until, we'll miss you, Chella. until she comes back. Now, who Real. do you want to shine a light back. on, Chella? I want to shine a light on one of my favorite people from Chicago, my brother, Bo Deal. Okay. He's my partner with our podcast that we relaunching, mm-hmm. Straight Drop Uncut. He also has the number one Chicago Land Bakery, Carmi Cakes, with his beautiful wife, Michelle. And he just dropped one of the number one movies on Tubi right now. Okay. It's called Like Father, Like Son. I Tyrant. got it. You know I love a Tubi movie. Yes, I love Bo Deal. He's a great guy. <laughs> He's a legend. He's a he, he used to be on BET Freestyle back in the day, but I just love the type of person he is. He does a lot in the community, and he changed his life, and I respect guys who come from nothing, That's right. you know, and build and just change their life. So shout out to Bo Deal. Shout out to Bo Deal. Yes. When are we going to Chicago, Mano? We got to pull up soon. Though. Yeah, y'all got to come and do our summer. show from there. That ain't yeah. lit. That's a plan. That's All right. right. Well, a shout out to you, Bo Deal. And uh, who do you guys want to shine a light on and spread some love to? 800-292-5150. Sherry, who do you want to shine a light on? So I want to shine a light on my mom. Okay. She is an amazing woman. And I'm going to put it in the ear that she has beat stomach cancer. Oh, okay. She went for surgery. And I, I, in the blood of Jesus, that she's going to be all right. She's an amazing mom, mm-hmm. grandmother, friend, sister, cousin, and her name is Denise Christmas. Ma, I just want to say thank you for being an amazing role model. I want to have a better mother than you. You are so amazing. And I also want to sign a light out on Freeport High School where I work at. All right. Okay. Let's all say a prayer for Denise. Let's shine a light on her. She's going to beat stomach cancer. Thank yes. you, Shelly, so much That's for right. calling. We're saying a prayer for your mom right now. I love you, mom. Thank you. Thank you, babe. That was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150, just in case you couldn't get through. It's a very active Friday. So UT is next. And you know what? First, let's talk about Polo G. He was arraigned on gun possession charges. And this all happened in New York City. We'll give you the details. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Samuel. Angela's spilling that yee Talk to him. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Chella's here. It's your girl, Chella H. Hey. Hey. Yep. No, man. Know what it is. Let's get into some UT. Okay, according to the New York Post, Polo G was arraigned on gun possession charges. He left a weapon in the uh, New York City hotel room, allegedly. This is the Dominic Hotel, which, by the way, used to be the Trump Soho. They had to yeah. change the name of it right. uh, to the Dominic. And the maid found a loaded Glock with 10 bullets in his room. Man, I hate to hear that. Authorities were alerted about this. Now, his attorney is saying that he's 100% serious in terms of his work, in terms of his professionalism. He has no incentive to flee because they're trying to get him bail uh, because he has a career that he's built. And prosecutors are arguing that he's a flight risk because of his past criminal record, which includes arrest for kidnapping, assault and robbery. So they did settle on a cash bail for twenty five thousand dollars and the court date will be June 4th. So he's out. Yes, on bail. Good, good. All right. Now, Kevin Durant has responded to Fat Joe. Fat Joe recently was uh, doing an interview and he was on the roommate show and said that while Kevin Durant was playing at Rucker Park and his debut at Rucker Park, he actually scored uh, 66 points. And then people were so upset at him that they tried to beat him up. All right. Here's what Fat Joe had to say. Kevin Durant, he scored like 82 points in, in the third quarter. Like they, ch- He don't like me telling this story. They chased him out the Rucker. Like they want to beat him up. <laughs> he whipped they ass so bad. That they wanted to literally beat him up out there. Like, I was out there. They chased him into the truck. He had to go. 
Um, Best storyteller in the game. Well, first of all, people were saying he didn't score 82. It was, I think they said 66. Like, I saw a lot of people commenting on it. But then Kevin Durant himself said another podcast lie. It was nothing but respect and love out there that night. Didn't feel unsafe for one second. And I saw a lot of people were in the comments like, that's a lie. They were showing him so much love. They ran onto the court. He showed love to everybody. I believe Fat Joe. You I heard Fat Joe tell the best story. Best story. <laughs> I believe I believe whatever Fat Joe said. I mean, maybe everybody surrounding him and being excited looked like they were chasing him. Nah, they just didn't see them goons in the corner. May know. Yeah. Were you there? Nah, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Fat Joe said I believe it. Listen, they, they might have not seen, you know. Are you saying Kevin Durant didn't see right, that? Right. They, they, everybody that showed him love, there was some goons probably to the side. Well, I mean, I don't think that uh, he felt like he was about to get beat up or anything. So, you know, I but know. I, I did. If you look at the comments, a lot of people were like, I was there. That did not happen like that. Mm. All right. Now, um, we got a lot more to talk about because, I mean, it's a Friday. It's a new music Friday. There's all kinds of beef going on. There's a lot all of, kinds of shots being thrown. We'll drama. get into that. Yeah. But in the meantime, um, let's play some J. Cole right now and TLC, Crooked Smile. When we come back, we have About Last Night. That's where we discuss what we did last night. It's way up. So, About Last Night. Last night. Here's how it went down. All right, it's Way Up. I'm Angela Yee. Way up, Shell way is up, here. Way up. That's right. Mano's in the building. New Mano. Lewis Mano. Mano, what'd you do yesterday? I was in studio. <laughs> getting to yeah. yeah, I see you also have announced some tour dates coming up. Yeah, Lobby Boys. Lobby Boys coming. It's a big. It's going to be big. All right, well. Pulse. Yesterday, what did we do yesterday, Chella? We were all over the place, but we yes, ended we up um, going to eat at Popeye's. That's right. I had you outside. Yes, and it was throwed in the bag Thursday. So, Chella That's said, right. anything you want at Popeye's, Whatever it's on y'all me. want, it's on Throw it in the bag Thursday. Chicken, shrimp. We was outside. Let's try, let's try that at, um, at Neiman's. Huh. Throw it in the bag Thursday. Friday. I, guess. Yeah. I won't be here. Let's, let's try that today. at Neiman's. We was um, in Popeye's. And the Even. other thing that we went to was, shout out to DJ Sus1. It was an event for a tonal. Have you ever seen tonal? It's like this workout, like a kind of a virtual workout. He need that. Okay, stop Absolutely. it. Why would you do right? that? No, because he do. That's my guy. Okay. He needs to work out. <laughs> I do too. He, knows it. he, he, knows he needs to tone up. Too. Tonal, tonal, whatever it is. It's an AI-powered um, home gym, basically, is, is, is what it's like. And... I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but I tried it one time in the mall and then I was doing it there. But basically it's a home gym and it has like a virtual trainer in front of you and you can pick what you want to do. So if there's something that you're working on, like this is what I'm working on. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And then it gives you the resistance. So it'll be like whatever the weight is. Right, whatever it is. It does the resistance for you. It has a bench so you can use the workout so bench. So it's like from- on your TV. Yeah, it's its own. It has its own TV in front of it, so it has like a oh, screen that's flat okay. against the wall. Right, and then you work out with a virtual trainer, and you can pick whatever you want and the length of your workout. So let's just say you don't have a lot of time, it'll be like fifteen minute workout. But then mm. if you have over forty five minutes, you can choose that. And um, it actually, you really feel the resistance. You tried it, right? Yeah, I, I lost five pounds already. Shut up. That, already? that in combination you know with walking it. to I work was doing every day. Some curls, and you know how afterwards right. you feel like there's a difference already. You be like. Yeah. I did yeah. eight That's curls. Right. I mean, usually I, I, I'm like that. <laughs> That's how I you do. got all these muscles right here. Okay, I, mean, I, no. I need to get back right, though, because I have kind of fell off. Well, anyway, it is something that I think is good because it doesn't take up a lot of space. And it's virtual and it has like a ton of workouts on there. So you can set your goal and then try to hit that goal. But just don't use it to hang up your clothes. You know how you do that with the treadmill? Yeah, right. That's my problem. Next thing you know, it blends in with the rest of your decorations in your new house. All right. Uh, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> well, anyway, that was about last night. And when we come back, tell us a secret. 800-292-5150 yeah. is the number. Friday. If there's anything you want to talk to us about and we're not going to judge you all three of us all right because we all done did some ish so nobody in here can can be mad 800-292-5150 you're anonymous it's a no judgment zone go ahead tell it tell us a secret my secrets be too much so <laughs> i'm gonna just keep them to myself <laughs> i'm gonna just tell may now we yeah, yeah. she, right. she let me know a few of them already the two huh. savages in the corner over there all right yeah. 800-292-5150 there's no way these two people should be judging you and you know i'm not gonna do it 800-292-5150 tell us a secret it's way up Shh. this is a judgment free zone tell us a secret what's up it's way up at angela Yee. happy friday I'm here. Mano's here. No, Tell us a secret. Chella's here. Chella's here. It's your girl, Chella H, Big H. 
And we've been in here telling all kinds of secrets behind the scenes. Yeah, I just told you one. I know. I wish you wouldn't have. A good one. That was a good one, too, right? Because as a good Samaritan, I feel like I... You got to report me? <laughs> I feel like I got to report you. Yeah, you but this is a no-judgment zone. We're not going to report any of you. I don't care what you have to say. All right, 800-292-5150. Anonymous caller, what's your secret? My baby father don't know that I set his car on fire. You set what? his car on wow. fire? <laughs> yeah, I set his car on fire. His ass was cheating, but I waited. A long time. So when I did it, he didn't know I was the one that did it. So how long you waited? <laughs> I waited like a year. Oh, and wow. I just put alcohol in there. Where was the car when you set it on fire? Oh, uh, it was in front of his house. Damn, you are. Uh, Somebody wow. could have died. You, yeah, you devious. And you said your girlfriend no, helped you. Everybody survived. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was injured. So wow. I got away with the crime. Let me ask you this: Did you stay with him after that? Yeah, I stayed with him a little bit after that, but oh you know. God. So well, you, it wasn't working out. So I was doing things like blowing up cars. So you said you know, his, he blew up his car out. and then still left him? Of course. Oh, my God. Uh, well, Listen, arson is never a good thing, though. That's yeah. a crime. If you yeah, get no, I, I did think it's not. I was younger and dumb, but that's what I did. Did it make you feel better? Did it make you yeah, feel better? feel better. And it made me feel better that he don't know that I did it. You know, because the thing is... Well, if he listening, he gonna know that. Right. You know, yeah. I just feel like uh, if something could have happened to somebody, that would have been yeah. awful. And you could end up going to jail for something and then, you know... She ain't but care nothing about none of that. Thanks for calling. And for people at home, we do not condone this activity. Not at all. Thank you for anonymously calling us. Mm-hmm. Smash right, your homie you. and say it. I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a better idea. But it thank is. you for calling. Anonymous caller, what's your secret? Basically, I've known my shorty for like 10 years or whatever, but I kind of got like a crush on this shorty I work with. So your work wife? He ain't did, nah, you ain't did nothing with her though. Nah, I ain't did nothing with her. I do, added her on the gram. Do, she know, do they know each other? Nah. Are you married? I mean, nah, we, we've been together 10 years, bro. They've been together. together 10 years. How come yeah. you're not married? I'm just curious. I feel like I shouldn't get married to her uh, house. Okay, that's okay. your good guy. So, so I'm trying to understand what your secret is. So, you you, you call up here just to tell us that you like somebody. You ain't did nothing yet. I was thinking about it. Was ah, like, oh. if, okay, listen, no, man. We can, we can do this. something. Then, if you're gonna be about something, be right. about it. Me, me, no. No, if you're gonna do something, it. do something. Then call up here. What, what's going on with your relationship, though, with the woman you've been with for ten years? Are you kind of like ready to get out of that? Are you bored? Are you trying to? perhaps move on like why is it that you feel like your mind is in other places uh to be honest nah, it's not that like i love her to death man we got, I mean, we got two kids together like, i love her to death so i, I wouldn't want to be with nobody but her but man listen if you're gonna do something do it if you're no. not then don't call up here like that people no i'm saying like if you want to this is tell us a but secret that ain't no real secret real. he don't want to do not for that's real that's what i'm saying he like, just has a little don't call up listen don't call up here with no crushes bro what would you do if she was like call up here with action what would you do if she was like let's let's go to the hotel i don't know maybe she'll just go home with both of y'all right no how about you just introduce her to your wife that's not his wife your your girlfriend for 10 years oh you gave me crazy ideas yeah you need to go with well i got you all right, guys. Well, thank you for sharing your secret, sir. Toxic. Call up here when you did something, man. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, brother. All right. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret. Thank you guys for calling. And when we come back, we have your Yeezy. And let's talk about Fallon versus Portia. Mm. The two of them, of course, don't get along because of both of their exes now. Simon will discuss what Fallon had to say on the Baller Alert show. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yeezy. Come and get the tea. Yo, happy Friday. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Chella's here. That's it's right. Chella H. H. Hey. Yep. Mayno. No, Mayno. Yeah. All right. Now let's get it started with Real Housewives of Atlanta. Kenya Moore is returning. It's official. And we already know that Porsche is going to be there. So it feels like the two of them are going to be the anchors for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Initially, Candy was going to stick around, but they said everybody was taken by surprise, including network and production, when she talked about leaving. So they are still casting, and I think pretty soon, according to Love B. Scott, we'll be able to know who will be on this new season as well. Okay. Um, but speaking of the season, what if they bought Fallon back? All right. Now, Fallon was on the Baller Alert show, and she talked about her ex, Simon, because remember, Simon and Portia had gotten married, but they've already broken up. And here's what she had to say would happen if her and Portia ran into each other. 
Were you shocked to find out when Portia and Simon separated? No. Was anybody? You think that was real? No, I think it was just a ploy to get back at me. So let me ask you this. If you if you ever ran into Portia, what would you talk to her about? That wouldn't be a safe scenario. At the end of the day, she knows what she did. I would have talked to her. Talk to her. Ain't gonna be no talking. Mm. Ain't gonna mm. be no talking. Wow. Smoke. It's on sight. I know that's crazy Man. if they do I mean it's a small you know they could run into each other somewhere yeah and it could be a lot of crashing going on but now you said that now you gotta for you gotta real say, stand yeah, on it gotta stand on it well you know what at the end of the day Simon is the one right that did the dirt for yeah, real but she probably felt at like the end of the day the friend. day gotta end the day gotta end but she probably felt like that was her friend and she in, in, introduced him but they act like they weren't really such good friends like according mm. to well, I don't yeah. know alright Jeezy is asking for primary custody of his daughter with Jeannie Mai amidst their divorce mm. he says that Jeannie doesn't even take care of the kid herself wow alright so he wants the judge to toss out the current custody and parenting time arrangement that he did in mediation and said that he wants his daughter to live with him full time. He said initially he agreed to move to the basement amid their breakup. But he says that Jeannie moved out of their family home and took their daughter with her. And has since taxed her brother and mother with the majority of the care of their two-year-old daughter, Monaco, because she has an extensive travel schedule. He thinks that's not good for their daughter and says that Jeannie has withheld his parenting time with their child for nearly two months. Mm. So he feels that she would have more stability if he had primary physical custody. Mm. That's tough. Yeah, it is. That's a tough one because you want to do what's best for the child. Right. But it also, I don't know, it's just... It's well, somebody got to be there often, so maybe he sees something that everybody else don't see. Right, and I, I think he wants to see his daughter more frequently. And if she's traveling a lot, even if she's bringing people to help, then right. she's not there. And he and she's young, so you want her mm -hmm. to be able to stay home or stay stable as much as possible. All right, Kendrick Lamar and um, Dave Free, his PG Lang partner, they have their live action comedy film with South Park creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone that's going to be in theaters next summer. That movie will be released on July 4th, 2025 and will be distributed by Paramount. So we don't know if Kendrick is going to appear in the movie, but they are handling the production side of things for right now. So mm. I know that's exciting for a lot of people. All right, um... That is your Yeezy. And last thing I want to say, Caitlyn Jenner, people were talking about this, right? Caitlyn posted good riddance, hashtag OJ Simpson. A lot of backlash happened. People were like, yeah. mind your business. Damn, and then Bruce. Caitlyn Jenner responded, I know you all think it's cute to compare a fatal car accident with multiple vehicles involved to a brutal murder. But remember, OJ said something to the effect of I could kill Nicole and get away with it because I'm OJ Simpson. So that mm. was Caitlyn's response to everybody's anger all right well that is your yt and when we come back we have under the radar those are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines they're flying under the radar and we have to talk about this tulsa real estate fund uh there's an article on baller alert that's talking about all of the issues and now they're selling the black house which is what people had invested their money into we'll discuss its way up the news i got news this is the news that relates to you these stories are flying under the radar all right, it's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's here. New Mano! Chella's here. That's right. Chella H, Big H. Big H. And it's time for these under the radar stories. All right, uh, chlamydia. There's a vaccine that is showing promise in its early trial because there are rates of STIs that are surging in the United States. In 2022, there were nearly 1.6 million cases of chlamydia. And chlamydia can also lead to infertility in women. All right, so there is an early stage clinical trial that has some promising results for a chlamydia vaccine. That'd be a great thing. Because um, right now there's no vaccine that can protect you against that. And with something that is so widespread. Now, of course, that does not mean you should run around unprotected. Right. But at least you can know that um, this is something. <laughs> <Mano>. <laughs> Why do we all Yo, look at Mano? <laughs> listen, and I'm, and I'm looking at Chella. Nah, don't look Chella, at me. Chella, for real. You got to. I don't run. I walk. <laughs> I'm looking at you for real. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. This is crazy. All right. And Woo. let's talk about this uh, Tulsa real estate fund. Now, Baller Alert has... Uh, uh, put up an article about what's happening now with this fund 
that Jay Morrison started. A lot of people invested uh, up to a, uh, they invested eleven point seven million dollars. By the way, wow. this fund raised eleven point seven million dollars, and it was supposed to revitalize and empower Black communities through strategic real estate investments. But the issue is, uh, according to recent developments, there have been some financial strains with the fund, and right now they refinance this building that they had purchased that was called the Black House, and that house is now for sale. It's known as the Legacy Center as well. People were having events there and you know I saw a lot of people in the comments when Baller Alert posted this story about the Tulsa fund troubles and I do want to say anybody that invests in anything it's always a risk and so people were commenting on that and Tanya Rapley who I know as my fab finance right she's a, a person who I always look to when it comes to anything financial she's a recognized millennial money expert she said the issue was a few things the portfolio wasn't just comprised of commercial real estate but residential too he bought his personal residence with fund money and the management fees were excessive including how much he paid his wife for marketing services yearly so a lot of different things um, there's one person in particular Julian Gordon who has personally lost $40,000 and so he's been covering all of this as the fund is nearing bankruptcy so we'll keep you guys um, in the know about what's going on with that all right and that is your under the radar you know we have the way it mix at the top of the hour plus we have coach Sydney Carter joining us she is the assistant coach at Texas she's also a former WNBA player with everybody watching women's college basketball all right this is a great time to discuss her opinions and her thoughts on what's happening it's way up it's relationship or career advice. Angela's dropping facts. So you should know. You should know. This is SD. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's here. Yep. No, Mano. Right. And Mano is an award-winning I advice am. giver. Award-winning. And we have somebody who wants to remain anonymous on the line. Hello. What is your question? Hey, Angela Yee. So I, I've been fathering my son with my big mom for eight years. Okay, so got you've been married. doing what you're supposed to do. That's your son, right? Yeah, she okay. got married. Her marriage was failed. She got pregnant by the good guy she married. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, I'm getting put on child support. Ooh. Should I pay it or should I just walk away from it? If you you can't pay, walk away from your yeah, kids, you'll bro. Go to, and you'll go to jail if you don't pay child support. No, nah, but it ain't even right. about the jail. It's about you and looking, at, looking at yourself in the mirror, bro. You got kids. You got to you gotta do what you got to do. I, I, I've been doing what I got to do. Child support is not for I, her. It's for your child. Uh, it can't be for my child when... I've been doing the father things. I take him on trips. I pick mm. him up. All of that. I oh, travel I to get him. All of that. I understand. I what do you're all of the above. So you saying you are you already handling your father duties? Why are you trying to put yes. me on child support? I get that. That yes. happened to me before. Eight years later, though. Right, right, right. If right. I wasn't a father, why wait eight years? You don't have to pay back child support, do you? You don't got to pay no child no. support if you're already doing what you got to well, do. Well, no. The, if the courts say you do, you do. Nah, we shouldn't be in the court, It though. doesn't That's matter. What she's no, we shouldn't did, be in the court. She, be in the she, court if I'm handling my it, business. But she did it, right? Yeah, she did it. Okay, so you are legally obligated to pay child support. Well, here's what I suggest you do. Definitely get yourself a lawyer. Make sure you have documentation of things that you've done. All you can do right now is make sure that you're as prepared as possible and understand what this child support is for. Now, if that means that you've already been giving her money to make sure that you pay for schooling, food, roof over the child's head. Now, when you do the child support, now you can just pay the child support and that's what that money goes toward. And all the extra stuff you do, like taking your child on trips, that's fine. Continue to do that. Good. Okay. And what I say is try to calm down the situation revisit everything change the energy and try to have a Adele conversation with her one more time even if she been giving you drama try to talk yeah. to her look we ain't been doing it the right way let's start fresh over and see how that goes yeah. and if that goes the wrong way then take it the other way yeah. because I understand it's pain it's like I've been doing my fatherly duties without no I don't need no court I don't need nobody Tell yeah, me I need that, to pay no child support. I've been doing. I've been handling my business. So why are you taking me to court? You taking me to court out of spite? That happened to me. I never went to court though. It I, never got that far. All right, yeah. So maybe what you do is try to talk to. Her, but remember, the bigger picture is the relationship that you guys have. It's hard for it to not be personal, but it is about the child. Right. And so always keep that in mind because your child is paying attention to the interactions that you guys have. And if you can put that first, and sometimes it's just like I don't understand why this is happening. And maybe things will get better later. But in the meantime, take care of what you need to take care of for yourself, so you're not into any legal issues. If you guys can have a civil conversation. Then do that. If you can't, 
at least now you'll be protecting the rights that you have as a father too as far as visitation as far as making sure if you guys need mediation that can happen I know there's apps that you can communicate through so that they can have a record of everything that y'all correspond in that way make sure you're not sending any crazy text messages or anything that if it's presented in court can go against you and just be careful and protect yourself you sound like a lawyer I'm yeah, for real. Yeah, you got love for real. I say, yo, tell them uh, they never take you alive, man. You know, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, man. He don't deserve that. Man, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you for calling. I sounded like a lawyer. You like a lawyer. Like, like <laughs> you broke down everything. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to that. We ain't going to court. May know. You can't say that. All right. Anyway, that was <laughs> Ask Ye 800-292-5150. That is my drunk award-winning advice giver. <laughs> and when we come back, we have Coach Sydney Carter joining us. She has gone viral for many different reasons, her amazing coaching, uh, but also the outfits that she wears. Some yeah. people have criticized her. She looked fly to me. It's she way up. fly to me, too. <laughs> Turn it up. Oh. You vibing way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. My girl Tella is here. That's right. Oh, uh, and we got Coach Carter, aka Sydney Carter. <laughs> Hello. In the building right. with us. Yes. And women's basketball, college basketball is on fire. It's up right now. It's our time. We're here. You know, you played in the WNBA mm -hmm. and then you're coaching and you're the head of player development. Yes. At the University of Texas. For you, what's the difference that you're seeing now when it comes to women's basketball in particular? Well, you're seeing a lot more people put in their platform to be a generational talent like Caitlin Clarks mm -hmm. and Angel Reese's like those are all generational talents and generational people um, but you're seeing like more teams in the spotlight now like it's not just like the Yukons and the Stanfords from like w when I played and when I was growing up that's what I always used to see so that's where everybody thought they had to go mm -hmm. now it's Iowa and NC State Texas um, you know all these different schools that are at the forefront of everything so everybody's popping now you know when you were playing financially how was it for you like as far as what you had to to do outside of the WNBA yeah so it was tough I mean I think I was making like maybe 35,000 maybe 40 so when you're when you come out of college like that's a lot of money for four five months mm -hmm. but then I went overseas and I was making about five times more than wow that. how was that experience for you um it was hard to to start off I went to Israel and like the Gaza stuff was happening my first year so wow. I was running from bomb shelter to, to bomb shelter good lord you know, like wow. in the back of my house was a bomb shelter but it was hard like I learned a couple of languages don't ask me to say nothing because <laughs> I'm a little rusty in my Hebrew but it was hard but it was rewarding like right. I learned so much and I traveled the world I saw so many different places right now coach Sid Carter is here with me she's the assistant coach for University of Texas women's college basketball team and now when we look at you though right because you have a lot of followers on social yes. media and people love you but at the same time people have been critical of mm -hmm. the way that you dress now you know me I love to see it mm -hmm. but <laughs> why do you think people have such an issue with you being dressed to the nines when you're on the court I mean Coaching. you know a lot of people are not secure with their own confidence and mm. so m my confidence offended people not sure why but at the end of the day I can't worry about that like I wake up and I'm happy with myself mm -hmm. and I'm to this day I'm not apologizing for for who I am because I was raised this way right. did that surprise you yeah it surprised me because I, at the end of the day I was just doing my job and like I can't help that I'm curvy I can't help that you know I like to dress a certain way and I've never been inappropriate and so of, of course to me that was surprising because it's like what what did I do wrong and when even when we're looking at college women's basketball and we're looking at what the commentators are having to say about the women and what people like you see a lot of misogyny yep and maybe it's not intended and they don't even realize it at the time until somebody has to point it out to them. Yep. But how does that affect the women? Like, what are some things that you talk to these women about? Because I know you're very close to the team. Yeah, I mean, I think I just continuously tell them, like, if you're living to please everybody else, like, you're always going to be miserable. You're never going to be happy in that. So at the end of the day, like, you just have to be confident in being who you are because, right. like, you're never going to please everybody. Everybody's always going to have something to say. So if you're going to pay attention to that, you're going to be miserable. Exactly. So I try to encourage them to walk in their confidence every day and walk in who they are. Caitlin Clark was asked to play in the big three. She was mm -hmm. offered five million dollars. Yes. I don't think she's doing that, right? She didn't She hasn't said yeah, she hasn't yet. said anything. Yeah. Now if you were advising her what would you say about that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's it's like 10 games. So you're making $5 million in 10 games, and the games aren't even that long. Mm -hmm. 
I might have to take that if it's me. <laughs> okay. Not even gonna lie to you. Yeah, that's not bad at all. All right, former WNBA player and also the assistant coach for the University of Texas, Coach Sydney Carter is here. We have more with her when we come back. Babbin' way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And right now we have Coach Sydney Carter in the building. She's the University of Texas's Women's Basketball Director of Player Development and also the Assistant Coach. Now, Jamil Hill had did an article where she was talking about Caitlin Clark because people were talking about how she's made people want to watch basketball. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were watching women's basketball. But she also was saying that part of it. And I, I don't think she was trying to be offensive to Caitlin Clark at all. Everybody knows she's great. Mm -hmm. But they were also saying that, um, you know, making it maybe something that might have to do with the fact that she's white and playing college basketball. And people are saying that's why people are tuning in when people were tuning in before that as well. Mm -hmm. And then also when you look at um, sometimes the way the articles are phrased and even hearing Angel Reese speak, Angel Reese speak about the racism yep. and, you know, the sexism and people saying awful things to her that she's had to deal with. Yep. Do you think that's a real thing? I mean, absolutely. I think when you see it, you see a lot of the times when they want to cover uh, black athletes, like they're always looking for the negative side mm -hmm. of the story. That's what you see most of the time. You seeing like the black athletes in drama. And so, you know, every time I'm looking at that, I'm like, well, what about when Angel had a line of people out at camp waiting to meet her? Like mm -hmm. those are the right. positive stories that you don't see too much effort put into. And so I feel like that's what they need to start covering more when it comes to women's basketball with everybody, not just certain athletes. Yeah, no, it's been really fun to watch and to see what the um, ratings have been like. Incredible. So what are some things that you feel like moving forward now that you can see these are real money makers? It brings in the ratings. What do we do now to make sure that we're capitalizing off this and it's not just a moment? Well, I hope that one the people that followed the game like now because Caitlin Clark and Angel and all those other people were playing like those are their favorite athletes so then follow them to their professional careers after that so now that the WNBA can get the type of recognition that college is getting at this point. Right now Coach Sid Carter is here with me. She's the assistant coach for University of Texas Women's College Basketball Team. Now do you see yourself being a head coach? Absolutely. Is that the goal? Okay. Yeah I mean I, I tell myself what I want to be like I speak things into existence and so I want to be one of the greatest of all time when it comes to women's basketball how do you balance your work with your personal life what's what what you mean because <laughs> like, i don't have no what i'm just kidding <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know i mean we all got some type of personal yeah. life going i mean on. i got a i got a dog uh, uh, okay and we she, were just talking about right. dogs yeah. i gotta ask you this question she, yeah yep. she i mean she, my dog dresses up with me so <laughs> that's what's up yeah. no we that's had a topic and me and chella butted heads about this uh -oh. okay <laughs> so let's go. just say you and your ex had a pet together okay and y'all break up Okay, is it okay to have shared custody of no. that pet or does No, who bought the dog? <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> what if y'all bought it you. together? I ain't never seen that. Well, so you agree with Chella, basically. Nine out of ten agree with me, yeah, by the way. It's, Where did you do this survey? I did. Out of all the people that called and the people that's been hitting me, like, I'm right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not a human. It's it's a dog. Oh. So you don't look at your little dog as like... Okay, no, no, that's my baby. That's my child. I am horrified. But, what if your dog hears this? <laughs> she might. Oh, uh, well, that's cute. <laughs> but yeah, so you're back to the personal life because you said... Yeah, so I mean, I really don't have one if I think about it like my personal life I'm doing like my brand stuff mm -hmm. um, and traveling I'll go see my family every now and then but like really I just I don't really have That's one not a problem. Yeah, okay. it's not. she's like work is yeah. work is work now do you know uh, what's the plans for you next year are you back at University of Texas I am I'm okay. back and I'm still putting it on alright well Coach Sydney Carter thank you so much and how can people follow you um, so you can follow me on Instagram at Coach Sid Carter. You can find me on Twitter, Sydney underscore Renee, and then um, on TikTok at Coach Sid Carter. You can watch the full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Yee. And of course, when we come back, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. That's I am right. Angela Yee, and Mano's here. Yes, indeed. Chella. Chella. Can we pull out a, pour out a little something for Chella? Because yes, she's real, leaving man. us today. Yeah, we don't like that, yeah, Chella. Yeah, I know. But you know, I'll it's Friday. We, lo we do I'll love you here. I love y'all. We love you. We love Chicago. Yes. And you are so Chicago, girl. I am. And y'all coming to Chicago for an entire week. Yes, we are. I can't wait. I'll it's be there. Like, I thought it was two days, but the entire week is fine, too. The entire week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just do the week. Uh, oh, my God. You know, but anyway, 
as I was saying, shout out to Tone Capone. That's right. Out there too. You're so fine. Um, and shout out to Anir Kiki. Shout out to everybody yep. in Chicago. Um, but in the meantime, also thank you to Coach Sid Carter for joining us today. You could watch that full interview on my YouTube channel, Way Up With Ye. Y'all have a great weekend. Be safe. And tell her you have the last word, too. I had a last word because I'm about to go. Just shout out to everybody in Chicago. Shout out to y'all because I love y'all. I love the energy. I just want to say um, Chicago is prom season. And I just want to throw out some prom people. My girl Mona Sky, um, Mona she, Sky, Mona Shout Sky, out to Mona, Mona Sky, 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 Mona Sky. Like the Sky. Sky. She has a the Sky. um a strip mall, Shout not out strip to Mona club, Sky strip, with mall. The strip But club. yeah, she rents all the prom cars. So hit okay. her up, my girl Pretty Heaven. She doing all the hair, Pretty and my heaven. girl Heaven as in in the sky, and my girl Black Barbie for nails. So Black all y'all who need prom goods, like hit up I Mona Heaven and Black Barbie. Okay. Chicago's okay. best. Love That's right. Chicago is lit. And, and you follow guys. me, follow me, your girl Chella H, the realest in it. Follow me everywhere but home, or you're going to have some smoke. <laughs> All right? The real Chella H, C-H-E-L-L-A-H. Y'all know what's going on. All right. <laughs> now y'all have the last word. Hi. I want to shine a light on my daughter, Angel. She's fully vegan. She's a chef. Her website is Halo's Kitchen by Chef A. I'm very proud of her. She's 22 years old. And she's doing her thing. She just did a thing with Country Wayne a couple of weeks ago. She had to feed him and like 10 of his entourage and they loved her food. It's showtime. Yeah, I'm about to tear it up. You tapped in and way up with Angela Yee. I want it now, Al.